Are you recently introduced to a TDS meter and is wondering what is TDS and if the meter is the right thing for you? Stay with me as I share with you what a TDS is, how it is measured, what can affect its accuracy and why it is not the right tool for everyone. Before we start, do you know what is TDS? TDS stands for Total Dissolved Solids. It is measured in ppm and or parts per million. It is a measurement of the total dissolved solids in floating around in your water. There are two ways to measure TDS, gravimetric analysis or conductivity. Gravimetric analysis is the most accurate way of measuring TDS. It involves evacuating your liquid solvent and measuring the mass of the residue that is left behind. The easiest way to measure TDS is actually by measuring electrical conductivity and converting it to TDS by using a ratio and a base temperature. There are a few things that can affect the conductivity of your liquid. All dissolved ions can conduct a certain amount of current. So when you have more ions dissolved in your water, it will raise your EC. The concentration of your dissolved ions will affect your EC directly. Of course, not all ions are made equal. Different ions have different abilities to conduct electricity. So, it is possible to have two liquids with the same EC but have totally different things dissolved in it. Conductivity is also affected by temperature. The warmer your liquid is, the better it can conduct electrical currents. Hence, the TDS may seem to increase when your tank water is warmer. Even though EC is pretty standard, what makes TDS readings sometimes unreliable is the conversion factor and whether your readout is temperature compensated. The conversion factor can vary from manufacturer to manufacturer, and most meters are calibrated at 25 degrees Celsius. So, the accuracy of your TDS readout depends on your water temperature and most importantly, the conversion factor used by the manufacturer. All in all, what a TDS meter tells you is how much stuff is floating around in your water. Water, fuse, water filter salesmen traditionally use this tool in their sales pitch to show you how effective is their filter. If you have low TDS, you have clean water. If you have high TDS, you have dirty water. However, what we want to know is what is in our water. And the TDS meter doesn't tell you that. So don't use it to test water in your aquarium to determine if it's time to do a water change or if the harness level has changed. Just like how you would not use a wrench to tighten a screw, you should really only use TDS meters if you know what is in your water or if you are wondering when to replace your filter consumables. If you are like me, you are most likely introduced to this tool at your local fish store or by a stream breeder. Some breeders use RODI filters to ensure the purity of their water source and remineralize it accordingly. These breeders use TDS as a quick and easy way of checking their water before adding it into their tanks, since all they have in their water are calcium, magnesium, and organic waste. TDS meters become a very useful tool when you have multiple tanks to test. By the way, if you are interested in remineralizing your water, I have a video on how to do it using calcium chloride and Epsom salts. For those of us that do not have RODI filter, then you are better off using the GH and KH test kits than a TDS meter. Those work by detecting only the specific minerals that make up the hardness levels. This way, you will not be confused into thinking that your water is of the correct hardness level when it is actually far from ideal. However, if you are an owner of multiple tanks, maybe you need to put some thought into what works best for you. If you find this useful, please click on the like button. If you would like more of such videos, do make sure you subscribe. That's all for today. I'll see you in the next one.